like I was saying in yesterday's video, I can definitely tell that these new tires handle differently on the road. And I said it yesterday as well, if you watched yesterday's video. Uh, I don't know if that's just because they're brand new tires, or if they're because they're a different brand, or if they're made differently. Uh, they are a cheaper brand than the, you know, big brand uh, that I had on there before. I had Firestones on there before. And they were pretty much almost bald. So obviously they're going to feel different on the truck, right? Obviously. Uh, so I bought new tires, threw them on there. This is the first, uh, yesterday was the first day with them. Had the first load on them. We're fully loaded. We're just under 80,000 pounds. There's lumber underneath this tarp. And I could definitely tell that it was, uh, uh, that was different. Not that it was bothering me or anything, but, you know, I know my truck. I can feel it beneath me. I can tell that something was different. Do you guys ever notice that too? Is that normal? I mean, obviously it has to be normal because there's new shoes on the truck, right? So it has to feel different. I'm probably just overthinking it. Other than that, they're doing fine. Like, doing great. We'll see how they do in wintertime, obviously, right? But I'll keep you updated. I told you I'd keep you updated because I bought Blackhawks. Uh, these are Blackhawks. Uh, it's kind of an off-brand. Uh, these are BDL 71s. It's a budget brand. So, uh, these were almost $4,000 cheaper than the Goodyear's that I was thinking of buying, and the Michelin's as well. Quite a bit cheaper. And of course, I was a little nervous, right, buying the cheaper tires. But $4,000 is a lot of money. And, uh, when it comes down to it, a tire is a tire. If it lasts not quite as long, well, I didn't pay quite as much. So I kind of expect it to wear down faster. But uh, if it balances out to about the same cost per mile, I guess they're about the same then, right? We'll see. I'll keep you updated as time goes on. But I'm expecting these tires to hopefully last about two years. Uh, so it's 2023 right now. Summer of... Uh, or summer or spring of 2026 no nope, 2025 sorry I can math I promise that's what I'm hoping to get them to we'll see what happens that's what I mean about friendly people the guy in the pickup he just wanted to come and chat he's an elderly gentleman probably oh, I don't want to guess his age but he's retired definitely uh, I just wanted to stop and chat. He said, oh, I just saw your truck. I just love trucks. Just, How are you doing? Where are you from? Oh, you're from Manitoba. Oh, there will come a few Canadian jokes, right? They're all friendly, laughing together. And he told me he uh, used to drive truck out uh, in St. Louis. And uh, his son uh, was a cop. And I told him, oh, that's cool. Because my other career choice, if I wasn't going to be a truck driver, I wanted to be a cop. And he talked to me about him. His son had just retired and... Uh, and we started talking about how uh, you know, it's getting worse for cops out there, and uh, that's too bad. i got a lot of respect for them. They have a hard job. They deal with the worst people of society every single day. Like, all the people we don't want to deal with, what do we do when we don't want to deal with someone? We call the cops, and they deal with them. And then all the paperwork of writing people up, and it's... I know some people don't like cops. And that's usually people that are doing things that the cops might arrest them for. <laughs> There's usually a reason they don't like cops. But, you know, I like cops. They're not all good, obviously. Just like not all truckers are good. But we need cops. And we need truck drivers. So back to my tires here. Uh, one thing I have to... Uh, I just can't get over it. Like, people in Minnesota are so friendly. So friendly. I love Minnesota. love Minnesota. Tires. I gotta be careful because these tire treads will pick up rocks like this and you want to get them out of there you don't want them to stay in there like sometimes they'll get thrown out on the road okay i have to get a tool for that one that one's in there good uh and that's why we have these mud flaps and that's why it's law to have these mud flaps because they might get thrown out i try to pick them all out because if like this one's really stuck in there and if it stays in there as the tire wears down 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 it'll get pushed further and further in by the weight of the truck until it actually pushes right through the tire and makes a hole. And then you got a flat tire. Now there's no specific stone picker tool that I have, so we'll use my 13 millimeter here. I'm trying to get this thing out of here. Jeez, this is probably not the right tool at all. 
I'm doing this with my left hand, first of all. That's the wrong. First thing I'm doing wrong. Come on, get out of there. Get out. That one's in there really good. There we go. Come on. Get out of there. If you want something I can get underneath there. There you go. Oh. Guess I shouldn't put it right by my tires again. <laughs> Pull it out of my tires just to put it right back in. There you go. Stay here. I picked up a few friends yesterday again. Oh, there's a big guy. Yikes. Nothing little bull snot. Won't fix. Rolling out of Brainerd right now. Got an empty flatbed behind me. It's a quick offload. It's been an eventful day so far. I've only been driving for an hour and a half. A deer ran into me. I didn't hit it, it hit me and lost. It was a definitive win for Old Blue. It didn't actually, uh, it just nicked the back of my truck. It happened just south of Emily. I was driving down the highway and suddenly this deer comes sprinting out of the long grass, just sprinting out. I guess it saw me, I guess in its panic, attempted to jump over my truck. And it felt like it was gonna jump right into my driver's side window here. The window was closed, but it, it seemed like it was just gonna hit my driver door, but I guess I was moving fast enough that it actually went between my truck and trailer, nicked my side fairing, didn't do any real damage, but it nailed my trailer right on the front corner of my trailer just below its ribs, it caught it there and uh, she got opened up all the way down to her to her rear hip. So it was a definitive win for Mole Blue. Actually, I guess it was the trailer. Zero damage, but the deer did sustain some damages. So I know it's not really that exciting of a story. That's why I didn't make a big deal of it when it happened. No damage to the truck, no damage to my trailer. Aye, aye. Oh, that was close to that car. Dude, man. I'm gonna stop here and let that car pass. Let that car through. Could be a family in that SUV, man. You just, just go hit them. Yeah, there's a car seat in the back. Crying out loud, people. Smarten up. Anyway, yeah, the sort of a non-event, non-thing. non, non -thing. I mean, for the deer, it was a big life-changing event for me. Well, I stopped and made sure everything was okay, and it was. So we're gonna keep trucking. Let that be a lesson to all you deer watching my vlogs. Stop running into the road, for crying out loud. Last night, I stopped in Deer River because there was deer everywhere. I saw like 20 deer. So I figured, you know, it's dark outside, I don't want to hit any deer at night. Let's park it. We'll continue during the daylight hours. And then I end up hitting one during the daylight hours. Or it hit me. Let's get this story straight. The deer hit me. I was going to fuel at the Casey's here in town. But their diesel pumps were all out of order. So now I've got to go down the road to Pillager and grab fuel there. I can't grab fuel just anywhere. They have to be able to accept uh, my fuel cards. This is going to be a, a big fill up. Price of diesel fuel here is three forty U.S. per U.S. gallon. With all the conversions of today, that would be a dollar eighteen Canadian per liter. Just. Uh, as a comparison, the fuel stop in St. Agathe, Manitoba, where I would usually stop the Flying J, the pump price there is $1.639 or $1.64 per liter today. This is $1.18. We're already at just about 170 gallons. So this is where the deer hit. I already wiped all the blood off of here and everything, but uh, you can see still a little bit left here. This thing right here, slice it right open. That 
is all over this back rim too. All over my half fender here. I cleaned that all off already. I didn't want to drive around with that. I'll shut the truck off here just momentarily because I'm going to need the air conditioning back soon. It's pretty hot, but this way you can hear me when I'm talking to you. Let's go over what this fuel cost here and what I saved. Now, what I pay at the pump or the pump price in Canada at the Flying J is always a little different than what I actually pay. Uh, there's fleet discounts. Excuse me, I'm spitting all over the place. Fleet discounts that we get because we buy so much fuel from there as a fleet that they'll get discounts on top of those. You guys, most of you guys know this already. But we're just going to go according to pump price as if I were paying full pump price in Canada as opposed to buying it here in Pillager at Casey's. Casey's here, I don't get any fleet discounts. I pay pump price here because we don't have we don't buy enough fuel from casey's usually we're buying a flying j or pilot but there are no flying j pilots around here and i was pretty much on e and i didn't want to fuel up in canada because i could fuel up here and save money and we're going to find out how much money i saved uh right now so i bought 182 us gallons that equals 688.9 so 689 liters uh, the price here was $3.39 or $3.40 a gallon USD, which equaled $618.63 USD. With the conversions, straight up conversions, that's $1.18 per liter Canadian, and it cost me $812.97 Canadian. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now let's see how much we actually saved because uh, we said that the price price posted in Canada at St. Agath where I usually would fuel on the way home if I were to fuel on the Canadian side was $1.639 this was $1.18.0 so uh, subtract $1.18 that's a savings of 45.9 cents per liter now how many liters did we buy here I said 688.956 I pressed the wrong button <laughs> 0.459 times 688.956 bam I saved myself $316 Canadian and 23 cents by fueling here and the fuel prices in Canada are going back up in July because the wonderful people in Ottawa think that uh, we need more expensive diesel fuel which is gonna make food more expensive and everything we haul more expensive. But that's gonna make the weather better. So who am I to question that, right? We all like sunshine, we want better weather. So uh, $316 cheaper and that will be more next month because the carbon tax is being lifted again. Again, in July. It's sad because now the Canadian economy is just losing money because I'm not spending my money up there. I'm spending my money down here in the United States where they still got a few brain cells to put together that raising the cost of diesel fuel is not going to change the weather. I mean, you're not an expert, Trucker Dodge. You're not a scientist. Well, you got me there. I didn't know I needed credentials to be able to figure that one out. But hey, hopefully one day we'll be able to fix that mess. Doesn't make any sense, does not make any sense. Everything keeps going up, prices keep going up and up and up and it seems like everything they do is too, it's almost like they're intentionally trying to make everything more and more expensive. Now I'm trying to buy my family a new home. We're trying to get into a bigger home so that we can raise our kids in a better home. They're making it harder and harder and harder. Aren't they supposed to be working for us to make things easier and easier? It's like they're intentionally saying, you know what, we're gonna slap this tax on there and guess what, ha, we're gonna tax the tax. Say goodbye to your dream of owning a new home, Trucker Josh. Say goodbye. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. You can't keep your money. The government needs your money. They need to take your money and give it to people over there because reasons. 
makes me so upset. So we have our new marching orders. Let's talk about something better. This is not a political channel. We're gonna go uh, back home empty, which is about a five hour drive back. It's not too bad, a little bit of a, a, little bit of a deadhead haul. That's okay, I, I don't mind. Uh, we have another load that's gonna keep us around the Winnipeg area for tomorrow. Uh, we're delivering some of that steel again, made in Canada, you guys remember that from last week. We're gonna bring some of that out to around Southern Manitoba and that'll fill up tomorrow. What is tomorrow? Tomorrow is... It's Tuesday today, right? Is it? Isn't it? What day is it today? It's the 21st, happy summer solstice or belated summer solstice to you. Oh, so it's Wednesday already. Oh, so that's Thursday then. That's what they're gonna get me doing on Thursday. Okay, so this week is gonna, not gonna have very much money coming in this week. So after the truck show on Saturday, I'm gonna make myself available for Sunday. And we are gonna have to put our nose to the grindstone. We are gonna have to really hammer down. We need to bring in some money because I gotta work twice as hard now, bringing the same money as before because I want a bigger house. We'll get there. We're just gonna work harder and harder and harder and harder. And off we go. So I was told by one of my good friends, Moses, uh, he's from Virginia, that when I put new drives on my truck, I should expect it to be feel a little bit weird until those tires get worn in a little bit and broken in. So uh, he said what I was feeling on those tires, what I was explaining to you this morning, was perfectly normal. That uh, it'll that weird feeling will go away after like a week or two or a couple of weeks. So that's good, because it was feeling a little weird to me. Feel a little bit of wishy-wishy, you know? Kind of like uh, it was floating around a little more than I liked it to. Let's get back out here. After this white car, we are turning right. Oh! No, there's another car coming after that. Maybe we'll wait. Should I wait? Should I wait? Oh, I'm way too nice. Oh, and there's a motor home after that yet. Oh, I should have gone. Oh, and there's another car after that one. I should have. And he's turning anyways. I totally could have gone. Totally could have gone. Now I'm behind a motor home. Or a camper anyways. Oh, great. Fantastic. This will be fun. Gotta love following people on vacation with no time schedule, you know? Like, good for them, I'm happy for them. But they're in no rush to get anywhere and they wanna take pictures of everything. So for tomorrow, I'm gonna go, well, I'm gonna go sleep in Headingley tonight. It's the same thing we did yesterday, uh, yesterday, last week on Thursday, right? Same, same deal, just a bit different uh, customers that we're going to, but the same steel. So I'll go there, I'll show up in Headingley first thing in the morning, I'll sleep right there at the Flying J, have a shower there tonight. I gotta grab a roll tight trailer tonight when I get back to the yard. I'm six hours from the yard, I'll get there, grab trailer 547, pull that to Headingley, go to bed, have a shower, or no, first have a shower, then go to bed. I guess it doesn't really matter, but I'd rather have a shower first and keep my bed sheets and blanket as clean as for as long as possible. Huh. Left on, South Street, US 10. This is Fargo, North Dakota. Just gonna make my way over to Interstate 94, which runs parallel to this road, a little to the south. 
and then we'll take the interstate uh, to I-29, then we'll take I-29 all the way home. Well, up to Manitoba anyway. You know what? Really grinds my gears. I haven't complained in a while. The engine fan on that truck kicks on all the time. And it seems to blow the air straight down onto the dusty gravel lot and just kicks up a big cloud of dust. I'm thinking I need to create something like a barrier just for underneath the engine fan so all of the air goes over the engine but not down onto the ground because so I was trying to get this shot of me unhooking on my trailer 532 there and then hooking up to that 547 roll tight I don't know how it turned out hopefully it worked maybe it was a good cinematic effect but that all that dust wasn't planned I think it kind of ruined my shot but it also gets dust all over my truck every time it's annoying do any of you have anything that you've seen or done to prevent the air from your engine fan going down and kicking up all that dust? Is there something I can buy for that or make it? I mean, it shouldn't be too hard, right? There's a little barrier. I don't know. I don't know. 
Okay, so I looked back at the footage and it actually wasn't that bad with the dust. It looked a lot worse from the cab, but it does get my truck extremely dirty every time I go on a gravel lot like this. It's fine when the engine fan's not on, but the engine fan always kicks on, even though the engine and the oil temperature is just fine. It doesn't need the engine fan on. But it kicks on and then it kicks up all that dust. So I'm looking for uh, solutions to that problem. Like, I'll have to look at it another day, but like, the engine fan's obviously right behind the rad here, right? All I'd want to do is just create like a little barrier or something just down there, just to prevent the air from blowing down and just keeping it over the motor. That might even be better for cooling the engine, right? If it uh, is more directed towards the engine and not around it. I don't know. I don't know. Like, look at this now. Look at this. Uh. It's a constant battle, and that engine fan is not on my team. <laughs> look at all these bugs. Man, we're going to have to get some bolts not on this soon. Uh, have you guys tried bolts not visible? You spray it on here, you wait a couple of minutes, and they practically just melt off. You just wipe them off with a rag. All right, so 547. That's the one I'm supposed to take. It has no door in the front. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so uh, I'll have to put these into the back. So I'm going to pull the trailer out and then uh, just uh, throw these in the back. Or, or can I keep them up here? No, no, it'd be much faster and easier just to put them in the back. That'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yeah. If I put them up here, I have to use more straps. It'll take longer. It'll also take longer if I keep talking about it and not actually doing it. I kind of just want to stand around a bit. Is that bad? Sometimes I feel like I just, oh, the weather's just really nice right now. It's quiet, except for my voice. It's beautiful out here. It is 10 o'clock at night. When I'm filming this, it is the longest daylight hour day of the year. The sun just set. It'll still be light for probably about another half hour, maybe close to an hour. I'm in Headingley, Manitoba. I'm gonna stay at the, the Esso, used to be Husky. We got a pickup just around the corner in the morning. Look at that. 10 o'clock. I wish we didn't have to make the daylight hours shorter again. I wish they would just stay like this. That is what it is. Because now the days start getting shorter again. And that's sad. happened so quick but we still have all of summer to look forward to yet so let's not get too sad and it's not even very full here nice right on and tons of parking available you watch that sunset with me for a little bit. I'm going to be turning to the right very soon. I want to try and find a spot along the side somewhere or along the back or something. Just off on my own where it'll be quiet. That's my trailer for tomorrow. 
fill it up with some more of that steel. I believe I have two deliveries in Winkler, Manitoba. One in Rosenort and one in, what was that other town again? Aug Ogney, Ogney, something like that. Either way, we'll make it happen and we'll be uh, all unloaded tomorrow afternoon and we'll see what they have for us tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday, so the next day's Friday and I'd really like to stay busy because Saturday's the truck show. But, I mean, if they got nothing for me on Friday I and mean, this week has been so slow, because I need to be home in the weekend. They don't want to send me out too far. I, I don't want to miss this truck show again. I already missed it once last year. So I told them I can't miss it, so they're doing their best, but uh, that means that I uh, you know, didn't make as much money as I wanted to. So next week, it's gonna be different. Next week, we're gonna put some miles on. I'm just gonna sit out here and Enjoy the last little bit of sunset. It's after 10 o'clock at night. Uh, sad because now we know that the days will start getting shorter. And we're not gonna say that evil W word yet. Winter. You see, that's why spring is my favorite season. The days are getting longer and longer and longer, like noticeably. Everything is getting warmer and green. And you have all of like spring and summer to look forward to and fall. Fall is a great season too. But once you get past spring, you're like, okay, now it's summer. You get to enjoy summer. And as you get closer and closer to fall, you start thinking, well, it's coming. It's coming. Let's not think about that though. You can't let your mind go there. As a Canadian, you cannot let your mind go there. It'll drive you crazy. Let's just enjoy the summer. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. I gotta get to bed. I gotta be up early in the morning. I have to pick up the load just around the corner here at 7 a.m. Hopefully we'll be out of there by eight and we can get all this delivered at a good time. And who knows, if I got nothing to do the next day, maybe I'll be going home tomorrow. And if that's the case, I'll make myself available to leave probably right after the truck show. But we'll work that out later. We'll work that out later. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. For some reason, I've had a couple of my followers say that they've been unsubscribed from my channel. I hear other YouTubers say this all the time, Ron. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know what's going on. Like, my channel's not controversial at all. So, I don't know why YouTube would be secretly unsubscribing people. But, uh, just if you don't mind, go down below the video. Just make sure you're still subscribed or that you have already subscribed. Hit that bell so you get a notification when tomorrow's video goes live. And I'd really appreciate that. That's the best way you can help me. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. And I'll see you tomorrow.